Welcome to Unit 3 and Topics 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3, Generalist and Specialist Species, K-Selected and R-Selected Species, and Survivorship Curves. A population is a group of individuals all belonging to the same species in a geographic area that is close enough to allow them to reproduce. We generally define a species as a group of individuals that can create viable offspring. The viability of offspring is determined based on whether or not said offspring can survive to reproductive maturity and is fertile. It's probably not news that all species have characteristic anatomical and physiological attributes. But those characteristics are not just limited to what the organism looks like or how it interacts with its environment. How a species survives, its rate of reproduction and growth, are all components that describe the overall nature of a given species. Since we're now exploring more deeply the characteristics of individual species, this is a good time to have a reminder on something that we've learned before regarding specialists and generalists. Specialist species have a relatively narrow niche and set of conditions under which they can survive, making them more susceptible to the adverse effects of environmental change. Generalist species are much more flexible due to their wider ecological niche and can withstand environmental changes much more effectively. A key feature of all living things, and perhaps the true biological purpose of life, is reproduction. In order for a population to grow in size, environmental conditions must be met, and individual organisms within a population must have its requirements satisfied. Individuals need food, they need water, they need physical space, and if part of a sexually reproducing species, they need a mate. So if all those requirements are met, the population will grow as individuals reproduce. Ecologists categorize the growth strategies of species into one of two categories, K-selection and R-selection. In this context, strategies doesn't have anything to do with a particular action individuals are engaging in, but rather they are the reproductive characteristics of a species. A K-selected species has two primary characteristics that define its population growth pattern. They exhibit a moderately paced, steady growth when resources are available, and once resource limitations are met, their population size remains relatively stable. Examples of K-selected species include large mammals, both terrestrial and aquatic, large fish species like sharks, and large woody plants like deciduous and evergreen trees. The traits of K-selected species are relative to the other category, R-selected, that we'll take a look at in a moment. K-selected species have a relatively long lifespan and require relatively larger proportion of its lifespan to reach reproductive maturity. K-selected species tend to only have a few reproductive events during their lifetime, creating a small number of offspring that are relatively large. Because fewer numbers of offspring are produced, population growth is slow, and parental care in K-selected species tends to be extremely high. A K-selected species is subject mainly to density-dependent limiting factors. An R-selected species is one that has directly contrasting characteristics to a K-selected one. First, R-selected species reproduce quickly by taking in nutrients from their environment, allowing their population to grow rapidly. When resources are abundant, they reproduce at their maximum biotic potential, exponentially. This essentially means that they are reproducing at the fastest possible rate for them, and the R in R-selected is the same R as this variable in the exponential growth equation. Unlike a K-selected species, R-selected species tend to have an unstable population size and includes examples like small fish, small mammals, insects, and bacteria. The characteristic traits of an R-selected species are exactly opposite of those found with a K-selected species. 
very few species fit perfectly within one of those two categories. Therefore, we would observe the characteristics of a species in total to determine which category it fits best into. When we take into account the effects of a species reproductive characteristics, that helps to explain why we observe different growth patterns over time. A K-selected species, represented by the blue line, exhibits a relatively stable population with only minor fluctuations around the carrying capacity. The red line, with its dramatic upshoots and downturns, represents an R-selected species. In addition to their reproductive characteristics, K and R-selected species have other attributes that can be used to distinguish between them. Generally speaking, those attributes that are true for a K-selected species are mutually exclusive with those for an R-selected one. Because K-selected species usually sustain higher population sizes and therefore higher population densities, competition for scarce resources is usually much more fierce. This in turn makes parental care for young that much more critical to help ensure their survival. Because invasive species are more often R-selected, their rapid utilization of a habitat's resources and population growth result in a greater threat to K-selected species that rely on stability and are much more susceptible to environmental stressors. Ultimately, though, it's the availability of resources in the species' habitat that will determine whether or not a K-selected or R-selected species are able to grow as they typically do. Another manner in which ecologists compare and describe populations is with a model called a survivorship curve. The model allows us to describe what a population's survivorship is like throughout its lifespan, as well as make comparisons to other types of species. However, in order to make those comparisons, we can't really use a species' absolute lifespan to produce a diagram like this. Fruit flies live for 40 to 50 days. A brown rat lives to about two years old. Humans make it 79 years on average. So in order to compare species with wildly different lifespans, we represent them based on their percentage of maximum lifespan. 50 days for an average fruit fly is 100%. Two years for the average brown rat is 100%. 79 years for an average human, 100%. A species with a type 1 survivorship curve is one in which the highest death rate is exhibited close to the end of the maximum lifespan. Humans and other large mammals are great examples of species that demonstrate this, and there is a strong correlation between type 1 survivorship and case selection. The vast majority of individuals in the early stages of the lifespan survive, and it's the older individuals that are at greater risk for death. Species with a type 2 survivorship curve experience a relatively consistent death rate at all stages of their lifespan. Great examples of species that fall into this category include small mammals, some small reptiles, and most birds. A type 3 survivorship curve is one in which the death rate is highest for the youngest individuals. Very few newly created offspring survive to adulthood and reproductive maturity but those that do are very likely to make it to their maximum lifespan. The characteristics of a type three species align well with our selection and therefore include examples such as insects, many kinds of marine invertebrates, as well as small fish. And that brings topics 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3 to a close. Thank you and take care.